brute force password attacks are a method of using a list of passwords, normally from a file, that are fed into a potential victim or target. And that could be user accounts in a Microsoft Active Directory environment, or as in our case, we could be using a password file to try to brute force the password for a WPA2 protected Wi-Fi network. So here I've got the configuration page in my browser pulled up for our sample wireless router. This is a wireless router entirely under my control for testing purposes. You don't want to run these kinds of tests against wireless routers that you don't have permission to do that to. It could be considered illegal to try to crack these passwords because there is an intention of privacy. So be careful how you use these tools. So I could see if I click in the WPA PSK, that's the pre-shared key field, I can see we have a variation of the word password as the password for this Wi-Fi network. I could also see the wireless network name, the SSID. Up at the top here, the wireless network is called rt n 2 g Here in Kali Linux, I'm going to type iwconfig, where I can see I've got a wireless network interface here called WLAN0. What I need to do is put that into what's called monitoring mode, because what we want to do is watch any conversations between clients that are authenticating to the wireless router. If we can capture that traffic, we can then try to brute force it to guess what the password is. Here in Kali Linux, I'm going to type iwconfig, where I can see I've got a wireless adapter in the form of an interface called WLAN0. So here I'm going to run Airmon. I want to monitor network traffic. I want to start it, and the interface I want to do that for is WLAN0. Now what we're trying to do here with monitoring traffic, we want to capture any clients that are authenticating to the wireless router and then dump that into a capture file. And what we're going to do then is try to brute force the password from a password list against the capture file. So I'm going to clear the screen and type iwconfig once again. And when I do that, notice the interface has been renamed. Now it's called WLAN0MON. That's good. That means we are now in monitoring mode. So now what we want to do is start to gather some information about clients that will be authenticating to that wireless network. First things first, let's run aerodump-ng, and right now our interface is called WLAN0MON. What I want to do with this is get a list of wireless routers in the vicinity and also get their address information. Each of these lines that we see here is showing me uh, a number of different wireless networks. There's our RT, well, it keeps changing, but there's our ARIS, there's our RT600. There's all kinds of wireless networks that show up here. We can see if they're using WPA2 or if they're open or WPA3. And we can also see the 48-bit MAC address, the hardware address for the wireless interface in each of those wireless routers. And that's under the BSS ID column. Now, having done that, what I really want to do is just press Control C to get out of there. It says quitting at the bottom. Our network that we are interested in is this one, RTN 628 2G. We can see it's listening on channel 9, and we can also see its MAC address, which I'm going to select and copy by pressing copy. Now, why did I copy that? Because we need to focus our attention on monitoring traffic for clients authenticating to that specific interface on that wireless network. Okay, so having done that, how do we make that happen? So now I'm going to run arrow dump dash ng dash dash bssid and I'm going to right click to paste in the MAC address of the Wi-Fi interface in our wireless network or router. Then I'm going to specify dash c9 because remember that wireless network is using channel 9 for communications. I'll use the dash dash write parameter to write out to a file. I'm going to do that by specifying a location. So maybe the slash, the root of the file system on this host, and WPA. That'll be the prefix for the capture file names. And finally, I need to specify the interface I want to capture on. And we know that that is now called WLAN0MON. When I press enter, what I'm seeing at the top here is simply a reference that, yes, that is the MAC address of that wireless network. What I want to do at this point is make a connection from a client device. So I'm going to use my smartphone to make a connection to that wireless network. 
And sure enough, we can now see that we've got a connection on our wireless network from a client device. This is the MAC address of my smartphone. Now what happens is we want to be capturing traffic when that occurs. Now if clients are already connected, we can actually de-authenticate them. There is a command in Linux that will allow us to do that. It's the air replay ng command. You can de-authenticate them, which forces a re-authentication, hang around and wait for this to happen. In this case, we just happen to see a client has connected. So we're ready to go. I'm going to leave that open and switch to another terminal screen for Kali Linux. Now, before we do that, just to note, we know that we've got what we need because we can see the WPA handshake was captured. We see this in the upper right. We don't see what it is, but we know it was captured. So now we can compare our brute force password list against it. So back here in Kali Linux in a second terminal window, I'm going to use the cat command to take a look at USR, share, word lists, and I've got a sample text file where I've placed just a handful of password variations so we can expedite this example. Realistically, you would have a larger file, and if I just bring up the up arrow key, there is a sample here in Kali Linux. It's called rockyou.txt, and that's a much larger file with many, many variations as you can see. And so there's no specific amount of time it might take to crack this password through brute force mechanisms. However, it's going to be much quicker because we have just a tiny sample TXT file here. Okay, let's make this happen. So first things first, we also want to make sure we know which capture files are currently being used. So if I do an ls of the root and any files that end with .cap, we use the prefix of WPA to write output to. So there's the file WPA-01.cap. That's important to know. And you'll see that as we enter in this current command. So what we're going to do, we're going to run air crack dash ng. And I'm going to specify the name of the capture file here on the root that we are interested in. So that would be wpa-01.cap. The next thing we have to do is specify our word list so dash w. That's usr share. And we just looked at that a moment ago. And it was called sample.txt. That's it, press enter. And immediately, this is what we're looking for, it found the key. It knows that the passphrase to connect to this WPA2 wireless network is shown here as a variation of the word password. Now we're lucky, it was very quick because we have a tiny word file. It could take much longer than this in reality, but it is possible.